Hello, this is Ness Tilson here. Uh, this is a short video to show how to build kitchen base cabinets with, where we replace a continuous top, which is made of only one panel, with two uh, smaller panels, two small rails, about 100 millimeters wide, that we can see here in this example. Um, in this example, the top is made up of just a rail at the front and a rail at the back with an assembly into the sides and in fact there are two rails and there's no, no material in the middle. Well how do we do this with polyboss? Let's open a new cabinet. Uh, let's give it the size of a kitchen cabinet and give it a height of 850, um, a width of 600 and a depth of 600. Let's take 600. And let's give it a, a plinth just to make it look prettier. I'll just add a plinth in here, a front plinth, a setback 50. So here we have a basic cabinet. Now, what I want to do here, if I look in the cabinet, I look into the. There's no. The basic, there is no assembly details on it yet. Let's put some assembly details on it. Let's put in, for instance, a sub method and let's put some links to assemble our panels let's take a, uh, a wall a raw fix applied to this cabinet and we can see that we've actually applied here some cams raw fix cams these are special cams here which are can be machined on the three axis machine without turning the panel, without machining on the end. Um, very neat way of using uh, just flat panelling assembly. Um, <clears throat> now for instance, say that this is a kitchen base cabinet and um, what I want is not to have a full top but to have two uh, panels on, just two separate panels. The easiest way to do this is just take a, s a structure and let's take a surface split and say that we have two panels and we've got a slack of say 400 in the middle here and this will give me this so we have a cabinet which is like this if we look in texture view so this is what we have now two rails going across instead of a full panel top which is very the difficulty being, of course, now distribution of our fixings are no longer apply applicable. If we look into X-ray view. The rules are no longer the right ones. So let's take another rule. And let's say that we will take a rule concerning the left side and change the fittings rule. And let's take the rule which 50-50 and the right side two fitting links and let's put a rule in which is a 50-50 rule so that we now only have we have a 50 from the back and 50 from the front just one can sitting on our on our rails this is fine I mean this gives a good nice nice cabinet very coherent cabinet base cabinet the difficulty arises now if I look into my my top we can see that the top is split with the surface split and the first panel here panel one we can give its width as 100 and the second panel here we can see its width is 100 but if I change the depth now and say so my panel my depth of my cabinet is now 800 we can see and we look at the top we can see that the first panel has been the splitting distance here is the same 400 and the width of each rail here, the, the upper rails, has been increased to 200. What do I do if I want it to be continuously 100, even if I change the depth of my cabinet? But what do I do? Well, the thing is, we have to do it a different way. In that way, we have to let's edit it. Let's get rid of the surface split. Hang on, I'm not looking at the right surface split. Uh, surface split. Edit. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, great. Right. Here I've got I've taken away the surface split of the entire panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to make two instead of using surface split to make two rails, 
we're going to take the structure and use an inner tooling. We're going to take an inner tooling and we're going to take an inner tooling of a shape which is the rectangle. And the height of the rectangle is the width. I'm going to make the width of the rail I want to put in. And the width of the rectangle, I just want it something which is going to be well over the width of my cabinet. So let's put a metre here. And the position of, a, of this inner tooling, I will put it at the position of my railing. So if I take, the, for instance, the position of my inner tooling, See here, I put my inner tooling cutout at the position, the exact position that I want the railing. I'll do another one. I'll, I'll add another one here. Inner tooling two, and I'll do exactly the same thing for the front rail rectangle. The width and the height of the right are the right ones, but the tooling reference is now the bottom. The panel reference being also the bottom, and the distance from the bottom, from the front, that is zero. And now we have another inner tooling here which is at the position of the rail. I click OK. And we can see, in fact, that the... We look in the panelling. Yeah, in fact, we have cut off the front edge and the back edge of my panel. But what we want to do now is that we have the inner tooling appearing in the properties menu. And the inner tooling I'm going to take is, by default, is a nil panel, but I'm going to put it um, as a real panel. So I'll put nil panel no. For both inner toolings, I'm going to take their property nil panel or no, and place their property, material property for the inner tooling as the same material that I want my rails in. And once that is done, I'm going to take the properties of the material itself at the top and put that as a nil panel. And now we have two rails. You can see this here. We have two rails, which are 100 in width, the actual size of the inner tooling, um, and with the right ruling here, with, a, with rule, the placement rule for the cams being at 50 mil from the front and the back. Now what happens is we can have a look at inner tooling. The width of my inner tooling is 100. It always stays 100. Whatever inner tooling, we're inner tooling one and inner tooling two in the back and the front, width is 100. If I click outside and I change my depth here, which is 800, and I change it back to 600, you can see that the the railings do not change. The width of my railings do not change. So if I'm looking at the top again, I can still my inner tooling one is still 100, and my inner tooling two is still 100. Yeah, so I hope that um, has been interesting for you to show you just quickly how to set up um, two top rails on a small base cabinet. Um, Polybod, once you know how to use the different commands that uh, you have in Polybod, surface split, thickness split, inner toolings, etc., you'll find that you can do a vast number of jobs very easily, very efficiently and it's a really great little tool. Thanks for looking and I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.